Hello my dears, welcome to Fatih's Academy of EC Learning. Today we are going to discuss about light reflection and diffraction which is in your chapter 10 of NCRT physics textbook, science textbooks. It, it is a part of your physics uh, subject. Okay, can we see anything in a dark room? We cannot see anything in a dark room. What is the reason? We can see different things and different phenomena when, when there is light. So, if you want to see something, the light reflected from that particular object should be received by our eyes. Then after so many complicated bio biological processes, we have the uh, feeling of sight. We have the feeling of seeing something. Okay, now we are only discussing here the physics behind it that the light ray reflected from any object if we receive it then we can have the sight of that object you already familiar with the reflection and uh, refraction of light using the straight line propagation of light okay this basic concept will help us in the study of some of the optical phenomena in nature Let's move on to the chapter Reflection of Light. What is mean by reflection of light? A highly polished surface such as mirror reflects most of the light falling on it. You have the experience of reflection, isn't it? When you light up a torch onto a mirror, you can have the image on the floor or wall or something. Some surfaces reflect most of the light falling on it. This is called reflection of light. There is two laws regarding reflection of light. One is the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection and the incident ray, the normal to the mirror at the point of incidence and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane. We know that uh, when we are discussing the uh, law of reflection, you remember that a ray diagram, uh, uh, a light is obliquely uh, hitted a reflecting surface and uh, the surface is reflected back that uh, uh, incident light ray. Then you can have the laws like the angle of incidence which is represented by the small letter i is equal to the angle of reflection r and uh, the next law is the incident ray the normal to the mirror at the point of incidence and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane. These laws of reflection are applicable to all types of reflecting surfaces including spherical surfaces. Okay. You are familiar with the formation of image by a plane mirror. You, uh, you already had that uh, studied in your uh, previous classes. So, now we are discussing about the spherical mirrors. You people have the experiences of seeing your face on a spoon. Spoon have two surfaces. One is curved inwards and uh, one is curved outwards. The outer surface of a spoon is curved outwards whereas the inner surface of the spoon is curved inwards. Uh, this is an example of spherical reflecting surfaces. One is curved inside and the other is curved outside. Okay. Spherical mirrors are of two types. A spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards that its faces towards the center of the sphere is called concave mirror. What is concave mirror? Concave mirror is a spherical mirror which is curved inwards. We know that this Spherical mirror is part of a big sphere, isn't it? The spherical mirror is a part of a big sphere. If the uh, reflecting surface faces the center, then this is called a concave mirror or it is curved inside or curved like a cave, 
it can be uh, uh, named as it is named as concave whereas uh, con for the convex mirror the reflecting surface is outwards okay uh, the reflecting a spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved outward is called a convex mirror uh, so this is the concave mirror the uh, the spherical surface is the spherical reflecting surface is curved inwards is called concave mirror and whereas the uh, spherical um, reflecting surface is curved outward is called what convex mirror we need to uh, uh, know uh, certain terms regarding uh, spherical mirrors or mirrors uh, uh, in order to um, move on let's see okay first one is the pole what the center of the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is a point called the pole it lies on the surface of the mirror the pole is usually represented by the letter p okay we can have that picture here this is the p what is p p or pole is the center of the reflecting surface this is a concave mirror concave mirror curved inwards the pole p is the center of this reflecting surface whereas for this case this is a convex mirror here the p also the center of the reflecting surface so first we have to uh, first we have the term pole what is mean by pole pole of a uh, con, uh, pole of a mirror it is the center of the reflecting surface is called what pole which is represented by the capital letter p okay next what we have to um, uh, discuss is the center of curvature S center of curvature of a spherical mirror i already told you that this concave mirror or convex mirror both of it were a part of a sphere isn't it uh, these two type of mirrors is a part of a sphere the center of curvature c means the center of this sphere of which this mirror is a part okay the center of what, what is mean by the center of curvature c center of curvature c means uh, which is represented by the capital letter c it is the center of the sphere of which these mirrors are a part that is called what center of curvature of a spherical mirror the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror forms a part of a sphere this sphere has a center this point is called the center of curvature of the spherical mirror it is represented by the letter c okay next what we have the we, we have to discuss is the radius of the sphere radius of the sphere is represented by the letter r letter r r is the radius of the sphere here c is the center of curvature and pc is the radius of curvature which is represented by the letter r in this case for the case of convex mirror it is here c is the what center of curvature and pc is the radius of curvature okay what is mean by principal axis principal axis is the straight line passing through the pole and the center of curvature so this is the principal axis can you see the principal axis uh, the principal axis is the straight line which uh, which passes through the center c center of curvature c and pole p of the mirror okay now now we have to discuss about the focus what is mean by focus capital f you heard about you uh, you heard about um, 
you can burn a pepper with using a corn game mirror how can we do that when we are concentrating the sunrise into a particular point and if you if you place a pepper on that particular point that pepper will get burnt okay let us see let us see in figure 10.2 a a number of rays this is uh, arrowed lines are called light rays a number of rays parallel to the principal axis are falling on a concave mirror okay so, so many rays are falling on a concave mirror and what it is seen all the reflected uh, light rays are meeting at a point on the principal axis this point is called the principal focus of the mirror what is the principal focus of the concave mirror when the light rays falling parallel to the principal axis on the mirror after reflection it all get intersected at a particular point that particular point is called what principal focus which is represented by the letter capital f the distance from the principal focus to the pole is called the what focal length which is represented by the letter small f so what is capital f capital f is the focus point and small f is the focal length focal length is the distance between the pole and the focus this is the case of the concave mirror for the convex mirror how, how, how what is the focus you can see in this figure there are so many light rays are falling on this uh, convex uh, mirror which is a uh, on of which the reflected surface is curved outwards you can see all the reflected rays looks like coming from a particular point outside the mirror outside the reflecting surface other side of the reflecting surface isn't it so many light rays are falling on this convex mirror and after the reflection you can see that all the reflected rays are supposed to be coming from the other side of the reflecting surface this point is called what focus of the convex mirror okay and you we can have the relationship between the radius of curvature r and the focal length f as r is equal to 2f what, what is the relation between r and 2f uh, sorry r and f r is equal to 2f now we are going to discuss about the image formation by a spherical mirror we can uh, before that we have to uh, we, you can have the image for formation of a concave mirror for different position uh, like this when we place at infinity the position of the image will be at the focus and the size of the image and nature of the image uh, and as, uh, etc are uh, explained here that you can check and study uh, we can uh, now discuss about the representation of images formed by spherical mirrors using ray diagrams so before that we have to follow certain rules there is certain things to be remembered while we are drawing a ray diagrams uh, regarding concave mirror or convex mirror see first is any ray parallel to the principal axis after reflection it will pass through the principal focus in the case of a concave mirror or appear to diverge from the principal focus in case of a convex mirror this you have to remember me firstly that is for the case of concave mirror any light ray which falls parallel to the principal axis after reflection it passes through the focus this is the case of concave mirror for the case of convex mirror it is 
the light ray after reflection is seems to be diverges from the focus of the convex mirror that is the first point you have to remember now what is the next next first case what we have told the reflect the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis and after reflection it goes through the focus here it is the uh, just opposite to that for the case of concave mirror any light ray that is incident through the focus will get reflected parallel to the principal axis first what we told first we told the light ray uh, which are incident parallel to the principal axis after reflection it passes through the focus but and the second point what we are going to say uh, it is the uh, what we are, what we are saying is that the light ray which is incident through the focus after reflection it passes parallel to the principal axis okay same uh, same is here also the light ray Uh, for the case of convex uh, mirror, the light ray uh, focus of a convex after reflection will emerge parallel to the principal axis. This is illustrated in figure 10.4a and b. Okay, in the case of uh, um, convex mirror, what is what it is? Uh, a light ray after reflection will uh, pass through parallel to the principal axis. You have to remember the figures. Okay, and now for, uh, next year, any light ray which is passing through the center of curvature after reflection also it follows the same path. Okay, a ray passing through the center of curvature of a concave mirror or directed in the direction of the center of curvature of a convex mirror after reflection is reflected back along the same path. Simply, we can say any light ray which is incident through the center of curvature after reflection also it follows the same path. Same is here also the light ray comes it uh, uh, it um, uh, supposed to move through the uh, center of the curvature and after reflection it follows the same path. You have to remember all these ray diagram while drawing our uh, image formation pictures okay now what is what we have to say a ray incident obliquely to the principal axis towards a point p on the concave mirror or a convex mirror is reflected obliquely the incident and reflected rays follow the laws of reflection at the point of incidence making equal angles with the principal axis that is this is the oblique incidence obliquely incident uh, light rays after reflection it reflects obliquely making an angle i and r respectively with the principal axis here if if the uh, light ray is uh, incident with a 30 degree angle it reflects with the same 30 degree angle if the light ray reflected with 45 degree angle then it will be reflected with 45 degree angle Suppose if the light ray is incident with a uh, 50 degree angle, then it is re uh, reflected also with a 50 degree angle. Okay. Now we have the image formation by concave mirror. How is the image formation? First case, the object is placed at infinity. The object is placed at infinity. It is very easy to draw the ray diagrams. Okay, first we you have to draw the concave mirror or convex mirror, what whatever it is. Okay, then first you draw the concave mirror, then you have to uh, mark the point pole, then draw the principal axis, mark the point F C. That the measurement should be correct. If the measurement is correct, you can have the uh, ray diagram uh, done without any mistake. So first, if uh, the object is placed at infinity, how can we draw the ray diagram? See, a light ray 
traveling first you see this light ray which is uh, traveling parallel to the principal axis after reflection it have to go through the focus okay at infinity then another right la light ray also uh, 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 parallel to the principal axis after reflection it uh, both of it intersect at the focus and where will we have the uh, image we will have the image at the focus where we can have the image we have the image of an object uh, uh, at the point where the intersection of the reflected rays happens okay we will get the uh, image at the point of intersection of the reflected rays now if the object is placed beyond c if the object is placed beyond C, first you, you have one ray that is C. First, uh, I, I told you, first you have to draw the mirror, mark the point P, then uh, um, um, mark the points F and C. If uh, F is 2 centimeter, then uh, uh, FP is 2 centimeter, then uh, CP will be 4 centimeter. If FP is 4 centimeter, then CP will be 8 centimeter. If F FP you took 3 centimeter, then you have to take CP how much? 6 centimeter, likewise. Okay. Uh, so that if that measurement is correct then you can have this ray diagram correctly drawn so first uh, uh, an object a b is placed then uh, a light ray travels uh, instant on this reflecting surface it gets reflected through f now another light ray you, you can have another light ray what is this this light ray passes through the c See, and after the reflection also it passes through C. So these two reflected rays, these two rays intersect at the point A dash. Draw the, uh, 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 draw uh, a line such that uh, we can have the image A dash, B dash. What is the peculiarity of this image? This image is real. Okay, real image, Anna. sorry, real, uh, the image is real and the, the image is smaller than the object now for the case of object uh, placed at the center of curvature c then where we can have the images uh, okay first uh, one uh, instant ray is reflected through the focus the other instant ray which is passed through f uh, and uh, it, which will be reflected uh, parallel to the principal axis meet at the point these two reflected rays will meet at the point a dash and a dash and b dash uh, it, you can have the image a dash b dash and now we have the object a b which is placed at the uh, in between c and f so one ray which is parallel to the principal axis after reflection it will go through what it will go through f and the another ray which is uh, after reflection it will pass us through the C, uh, C the two reflected rays will meet at the point A dash and we will have the um, image A dash B dash okay and in this case next case uh, when, when the object is placed at focus uh, where will we have the image we will have the image at infinity okay uh, the, this picture you have to remember uh, it um, uh, said, um, very often uh, for exam this question asks for the case of um, uh, object placed at the focus we have the object a b uh, one uh, instant ray after reflection passes through focus and one instant ray after reflection it passes through c then these two reflected rays is supposed to meet at infinity and the images will form at infinity when uh, we can have the uh, uh, largest Im uh, large image large image we will have when uh, we uh, kept the object in between f and p we, we, we can have the object 
kept at f and p will give a large image this is the uh, this uh, uh, we use we use concave mirror as a shaving mirror as make a mirror etc at this time where we uh, where, where we uh, what kind of uh, image we will get we will get a enlarged image a large image uh, the image size will be greater than that of object uh, this uh, this type of images uh, this type of uh, uh, images forms in the case of, of uh, uh, make mirrors and uh, shaving mirrors etc okay uses of concave mirrors as as we are already uh, told concave mirrors are commonly used in torches searchlights and vehicles headlights to get powerful parallel beams of light they are often used as shaving mirrors to see larger image of the face larger image of the face uh, at the, at that time here this kind of image formation happens okay the dentists use concave mirrors to see large images of the teeth patients. Large concave mirrors are used to concentrate sunlight to produce heat in solar furnaces. Another use is that, which is a very important one, that is in, in solar furnaces uh, to get uh, concentrated the sunlight, we use the uh, concave mirrors, uh, uses of concave mirrors. Okay, next image formation by a convex mirror. The same way as we discussed about the concave mirror, we can have the uh, formation of convex mirror also. Uh, the images at, uh, um, uh, sorry, the object which is kept at infinity, the image will be uh, formed at the focus and the uh, for the uh, object which is uh, placed beyond C, we will have the uh, image at the uh, image in between P and F. Okay, we use uses of convex mirror. Convex mirrors are commonly used as rear view wing mirrors in vehicles. These mirrors are fitted on the sides of the vehicle. You all are familiar with uh, convex mirror. Why we use rear uh, convex mirrors as rear view mirrors? Even though uh, uh, convex mirrors are enabling the driver to see traffic behind him or her to facilitate safe driving. Convex mirrors are preferred because they always give an erect though diminished image. Also, they have a wider field of view as they are curved outwards. That is the main reason why we, we use convex mirrors as a, uh, a rear view mirrors because uh, they give wider field of view as they are curved outwards. This convex mirrors enable the driver to view much larger area than would be possible with a plane mirror. That is the reason why we use convex mirror. We can have a larger area of view using convex mirrors. Okay. Uh, I hope I, um, you all are happy with my uh, teaching. If you have any doubt or any, uh, any queries, or any questions to ask please uh, do comment your uh, questions uh, uh, in the comment box okay uh, i will be uh, coming with more videos of your uh, ncrt physics test book so stay safe and uh, watch my videos